borrowed from a trustworthy, independent Syrian filmmaker. Its content is extremely graphic, the shots allegedly taken in the town of Zamalka shortly after the incident on Wednesday morning. I managed to speak to this woman who didn't want to be identified. She has relatives in Zamalka and said she got there a few hours after it was allegedly hit by chemical weapons. Several of her relatives were killed, she told me. Others remain gravely sick. They have very bad pain and their legs cannot carry them, she said. If they want to go to the bathroom, they have to crawl on the floor. They try to drink water because they feel they have to throw up all the time. They have bad headaches and can barely see. The woman says it's impossible to tell which side used the alleged chemicals. Both the Syrian government and the opposition are accusing each other of staging the attack. There's little doubt that there was a large military operation underway by Syrian government forces on Wednesday morning. We managed to get to an area in Damascus very close to where the incidents purportedly happened. People we spoke to here told us they didn't feel any effects of possible nerve agents. In this area here, there were no chemicals. I didn't smell anything or feel anything, this man said. Otherwise, we would all not be here. I'm in the Jeramana district, and right behind me, that is the last checkpoint before you reach the district of Ruta, where allegedly these chemical weapons attacks took place. The military won't allow us to go any further further than we are right now, so all we can do is be right here and try and get people who are coming out of that area to try and get as many eyewitness accounts as we can. Even the United Nations weapons inspectors who are in Damascus can't get close to the alleged site, still waiting for permission from the Syrian government. With 1,300 people allegedly killed in the attack and the UN saying time is of the essence, calls for an independent investigation are mounting in the international community. Now, this week we saw a sad milestone in the Syrian war. The UN says one million children have fled from the country. That's a million youngsters torn away from their homes and communities to face an uncertain future. In Lebanon, CNN's Mohamed Jamdun talks with one of those refugees. Watching eight-year-old Aya play, you'd never guess she's become the embodiment of a tragedy. One of one million Syrian children who are now refugees. She's happy her family was able to flee the devastation of Homs, but I'm curious what her life is like now. One dismissive expression says it all. I press on, asking how life here is so difficult. It's just not good, she tells me. It's just not good. Aya doesn't say much today, but she does make it clear she wishes she were back in school. She went briefly after arriving here in neighboring Lebanon, but after a while, her family could no longer afford the transportation fees, and she had to stop. Nowadays, she must stay at what has become her home and help care for her disabled sister, Lakiba. The UNHCR selected Aya as their poster child to raise awareness of what they call a shameful milestone. We chose Aya because uh, she, she's a symbol of the, the resilience that we see in many children here. Kids so young they should never know this many hardships, struggling to overcome the numerous horrors they've already witnessed. You can see that she has, she still has this part. She wants to learn, she wants to go to school. She, she's still hoping that one day she would be able to go back to Syria. Here in Lebanon's Bekaa Valley, it's makeshift refugee camps like this one that got the landscape. Syrian families having fled the violence back home, trying to set up whatever remnant of a life they can here. It's a very harsh existence. There are at least 200,000 registered Syrian refugees in this part of Lebanon alone. Over 100,000 of them are children. In all, more than 750,000 Syrian child refugees are under the age of 11. A shocking statistic and a chilling reminder of what a humanitarian disaster Syria's brutal conflict has become. These children may have escaped a civil war, but it's clear the trauma remains. Raising fears, they'll become a lost generation. No child should have to play next to barbed wire. 
These kids barely notice it. Muhammad Jam Drum, CNN, in the Bacar Valley, Lebanon. In the Indian city of Mumbai, a massive manhunt of three suspects in the gang rape of a young photojournalist is underway. Police have arrested a second suspect who has been charged, and Chinese Politburo member Boshi Lai has admitted responsibility for some embezzlement of public funds later traced to his wife's bank account. For more on those and other stories, let's look at this DW News Review. And charged in the Indian city of Mumbai. Police say he's confessed and identified the other perpetrators. A massive manhunt is underway for the three suspects still at large. The case has galvanized the country with protesters demanding more safety measures for women. Former Chinese Politburo member Bo Xilai has admitted he bears some responsibility for embezzlement of public money, which ended up in his wife's bank account. The court showed testimony from Gu Kai Lai, who was convicted of murder last year. Bo said he had been careless and failed to investigate, but denied charges of abuse of office and corruption against him. Massive wildfires burning in California have now reached Yosemite National Park, one of the most treasured nature reserves in the United States. Nearly 2,000 firefighters have been brought in to control the blaze. Get the top of the tree! We take a short break. Sports News is next. Welcome back. Abu Bakr Mark, a youth football coach from Charlton Athletics Football Club in England, has urged the Ministry of Youth and Sports and other football stakeholders to provide the necessary structures to help young Gambian talents discover their full potentials. The English-born tactician was speaking in Basse during the just-ended National Youth and Sports Summer Camp. The camp, as we hear in this report by MS Jalo, has helped in discovering young talents. I will not play football, but when I come here, I have more experiences in football. So I want to thank Mark and Mohammed for the thing they done for me to know all this. Why don't you play football at home? Because I don't have time for that. What time do you have? What, what, what time do you have? What, 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 what do you do at home? Even if I want to play, my mother said no. The story of Yon Tijan Balde. A camper from Upper River Region is one among many success stories of the National Youth and Sports Summer Camp. The Summer Camp is organized under the ages of the Ministry of Youth and Sports, bringing together 120 children below the age of 15 from all over the country to help them discover their talents and learn new skills in sports and other activities. During the week-long Summer Camp in Basse, Tijan Balde and his fellow campers would take to the field every morning to learn the basics in football volleyball, basketball, handball, and wrestling. For Tijan Du, who hardly had the chance to play football at home, the camp provides him the rare opportunity to explore his talents in the beautiful game. He was often seen struggling to control or pass the ball during practice sessions. But with the help of their trainer, Abubakar Mark, a youth football coach from Charlton Athletics Football Club in England, Tijan and the rest of the children have had significant improvement in some basic football skills, such as ball control, passing, heading, and dribbling skills, and it was real fun for them. I feel very great because Mark and Mohammed taught us great things like how to man player, charge, pass, do long passes, play zoo. Yeah. Their English tactician was amazed by Tijan's emotional story and the incredible talents he spotted while training the kids. I've been surprised to say the least because at first maybe I was ignorant a bit but the kids they're more than able more than able I just believe I just encourage the Gambian people to support your kids more because they're good and they're bright stars of tomorrow so if you aid the development I'm sure they too they'll perform because you've got some good talents here very good talents. The Charlton Athletics youth trainer impressed with the raw talents challenge the Ministry of Youth and Sports and all relevant football stakeholders to provide the necessary structures to help nurture the abundant talents in the country into realizing their full potentials. Facility-wise, the pitch is good. They're playing the best they can here. This is very bubbly and they're doing great stuff, touching it and everything. I would love to see them on nice grass because if they're doing on Astro, if they're doing so good on bumpy pitch here, 